not necessarily coincide with those of our ownership, management, or staff. Welcome to Tech Talk 2020 with Sanjay Parker. I'm your show host, Sanjay Parker. I'm here with my sidekick and co-host, Mike Carswell. And we're here today on a very commemorative day of a tragedy many years ago on December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day. We're here to talk about something that was released very recently called Amazon Go. Amazon Go. How about Mike Go? Hey, everybody. Thank you for listening to Tech Talk 2020. Mike Carswell, Sanjay Parker. Uh, here on uh, WINT Radio, 1330 AM and 101.5 FM. And you can also listen to us on WINTradio.com. And you know what? We're also on Facebook Live. Thank you, Josiah. And we're also, uh, you can tweet at us if you have a thought, idea, or comment on Tech Talk 2020, which is our Twitter handle. It is a wonderful evening here in good old Northeast Ohio. We're glad you're tuning in. Sanjay and I uh, always like to talk about things that help us get smarter together. So we would again. We want to acknowledge our veterans out there, and we 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 thank our veterans and our, our nation. Pearl Harbor Day was always a big day in my home. My mom talked about listening to the ex- actual report of that on the radio when she was a little kid. So, wow, big, big day. She always reminded us of that, and we respect and love our veterans for what they've served. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. So before we get into what Amazon Go is, and basically, so Amazon Go. Yeah. Well, first of all, Amazon isn't that like the the river, right? Down in it is. South America. It, no, that's the Nile. <laughs> <laughs> no, denial's I over. Know, I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> You're in denial, right? So, right. So, what we have here is Amazon Go, which is basically like a physical manifestation of Amazon.com in the real world. Now, I'm just going to tease it there. But okay. Before we get into that, I like to paint happy pictures that make me happy at the beginning of the show. So, picture this with me, yes. if you will. What is it? Okay. It's the theater of the mind. Mm. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to talk about Sunday night, 10 p.m., Mike Carswell at a Walmart in line. He just needs some stomach medication or something because he's had a, a rough day of eating chili dogs and watching football. That's all he wants. Yeah. yeah. And so he goes to the checkout and it's 20 deep because they only have one register open. That makes me happy to picture that. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Now, see, I'm the one eating the chili dogs, and I'm the one standing in line with the heartburn, and it's making you happy. All right, it does But it makes me weird. chuckle. Okay, All right, so okay. 20 deep, and I actually have a real story about that. But Okay. Mike, you know, I try to give you some jobs that you should think about, and, you know, I always want Mike to be, you know, relevant 20 years from now. So Thank you. One of the cool jobs that you could get now is called a line queuing scientist, and they write line queuing theory, and they debate it. A line queuing scientist. Right. Well, I gave up being a scientist in about third grade, but because I yeah, I went to George Washington Carver Elementary School, you know he was one of my heroes. All the things he did with the sweet potato and the peanut and all those kind of things, mm-hmm. and and so I th- thought I wanted to be a scientist. And then I, I don't know. I think for Christmas I got a uh, a microscope, and I was bored after about fourteen minutes. So I realized that I'm not going to be a scientist. So what kind of scientist are you trying to? So line queuing scientist. So line queuing line scientist. Queuing. There's people who talk okay. all about what's the best way to get through a checkout line in the fastest time. So there's three lines, Mike. There's Mm -hmm. one, uh, picture it, one to your left that's pretty long, maybe 20 people deep. One in the middle that is a serpentine line. It's going all the way down and around, right? Mm -hmm. And then one to the right, which has maybe 12 to 15 people or so. So what was the first one again? Uh, About 20 people. It's on your left. 20 serpentine and then... Right. Typically, which line should you pick? If you had a choice. I, I, I think the first one. Right. And so that's really good. That's okay. the second best choice. Okay. Well. And, and line theorists will say, line queuing <laughs> theorists would say, the serpentine line is the one you should pick. Serpentine line is because they call people from that line to the other lines and they get them, you know, they get them in uh, order because mm-hmm. the rule, the idea is you don't want one person to hold up the entire line. So they'll call out numbers and you get in that line. That's Honestly, a serpentine I, line I, if you I, ever I, see it. I don't know why there would be a serpentine line anyway. The second choice yes, is sir. to the left because 90% of people are right handed and they always go to right, you know, uh-huh. and they tell you if you go into Disney, instead of going to the right and following the crowd if you go in the morning, go to the left. You won't encounter most of the crowd until you're halfway through the park. Uh-huh. So just, you know, little tips and signs like that from your line queuing scientist. Now, let's think about this line problem. Nobody wants to wait in line. I hate lines. Right. And we know that we talk about the digital empowerment of people on our show. Mm -hmm. And one of the examples I have is there's a guy 
10 o'clock on a Sunday night. He's in line with diapers. His wife just had a baby, and they had a baby. That's definitely not me. Right. It's not my car's fault. <laughs> I'm with the hot dogs. But I, yeah, I like the hot dogs. <laughs> so waiting in line, and well, you know, he's just stuck. There's 20 people ahead of him. It's 10 at night. All he wants to do is get home. Take, you know, care, take care of Junior. Yeah. Yep. And so he takes a picture of the line on his uh, smartphone, and he tweets it to Walmart customer service. Oh. Within three minutes, mm-hmm. manager came out, opened up two more lines. He got a tweet back from Walmart customer service and said, sorry about that. We took care of it for you. Please let us know if there's anything we can do. Sweet. That expectation of empowerment. I now have a voice, right? Mm-hmm. What could you have called? You might have looked up the number to Walmart and called them. That's what phones helped us do that were smartphones. Yeah, but no Before that, you that, just sure. complain right. and stomp your feet, right, mm-hmm. or leave. Mm-hmm. Today, we have that expectation of empowerment. Pretty amazing. Now, did he tweet directly to Walmart customer service, or did he just make a universal tweet? Nope, he tweeted right to them. Okay. Yep, and they okay. were able to get it. They got a notification. They took care of it. Now... Think about the evolution of that line. Everybody hates the line. So now, you know, what, five, six years ago, we started seeing a proliferation of self-checkout, mm-hmm. right? So you were able to go. Well, first first we had the express lane. So if you've got a lot of um, items, you're going through the regular lines. If you've got 12 or less or whatever it is, you go through the speedy lines. You still have lines. Right. Then they said, let's get rid of the cashiers and let's open up many more self-checkout lanes so we can have people go by themselves. So mm-hmm. we still have lines, right? Mm-hmm. What Amazon Go is, it's um, a physical store that you can buy products, like a grocery store. You pick them up, put them in your cart, and you leave. Really? And it automatically gets added to your cart as you pick up the items. Mm -hmm. It also gets tabulated in terms of totals. Okay. And you get charged, and you get a receipt, all without doing anything. Now, don't try this at home today, (laughs) folks. There's only one store in the country, and it's for Amazon employees only. It's in Seattle. Okay. So if you're at any other store, don't try to walk out with a cart full of things. All right, so let's back the tape up. Back the tape up? No, so you're telling me, so I can one day, this is a vision, one day take a trip to the store. We'll call it the store. And I think people need to understand, too, Amazon is, is almost like this exclusive club of purchasers, right? You know, I, I, don't, I have an Amazon membership, and I rarely use it. My kids, they have Prime, so they mm-hmm. use it all the time. So... I go to the store, I pick up my kielbasa, I pick up my my buns, my chili must, dogs, my chili dogs, that's yeah. right. And then uh and then some some pliers and and a, and a and a hammer that I need or whatever. And so you're saying I toss them in my cart. Mm-hmm. In my boogie cart and I um uh, I walk out of the store. Yeah. And so I've never done that because I didn't want to end up in the penitentiary. So. Right, right. So definitely yeah. don't try it yet. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> think about the frictionless shopping experience of Amazon.com. Mm-hmm. You go in, right? You shop, you sign in, you click on whatever you want, you click one-click purchase, and you're done. The stuff arrives two days later, right? How do you make that frictionless in the real world? Well, you know, think about this. When I buy things from Amazon and I run out of a product, right? I can go look at my order history, right? Or it's going to recommend that I get something else. I think like, hey, Mike, you know, I bought this plumbing tool that was amazing. I don't know what it's called. I don't know where it is. Let me look in my shopping cart or my order history and let me see what it was. You know, it's amazing to have that ability to go back. How many grocery store receipts have you kept for more than five years in your life? Oh, I don't, I don't keep them more than I just say, hey, right. look, honey, look what I bought. You That's never know what you bought. You know, right, right. you get the same things or you run out of something. What brand was that? What exact, you know, so you, you won't have that ability. So. Amazon says, we're going to track all that for you. We're going to use RFID, which means when you walk into the uh, entrance area, you, you, know, you sign in or there's an RFID uh, tag associated with your phone. Mm-hmm. It knows who you are. You go in. And then it uses sensor fusion so that it can tell what object you're picking up. So I might be next to ketchup and mustard, and I pick up the mustard. Mm-hmm. And cameras will detect uh, that I picked up the mustard. Mm-hmm. It'll see me put it into the cart. Also, the shelves will understand that one mustard item was removed because of the weight. And then my personalized shopping history will also tell me it's not the ketchup next to it that weighs the same and looks close to it because Sanjay never buys ketchup, right? So all that personalization history, their goal when they release it is to be 100% accurate because imagine if it's not. Mm -hmm. Then I could be billed for something I didn't get or build more, or I'm going to lose money because it's basically like shoplifting. We're not tracking it or doing the right thing. They've got to be accurate. They make this analogous to autonomous driving with a multitude of sensors backing up each other in terms of the data collected and then the convenience for you to basically go on autopilot, get your stuff, leave. That's it. So 
again, we're talking about an opportunity for people that, uh, well, not an opportunity, but an opportunity for, for automation to t- replace us again and get rid of it, minus trivia. So I'm a person that enjoys shopping, honestly. I think I'm a much, much better grocery shopper than the average guy out there. I take my time. I, I'm, care, I'm careful. I look for sales. I look at the bottom of the shelf as well as the top of the shelf. You know, eye level for me is quite different for most people. So, <laughs> you, know, man, you know how many times I've been in a grocery store and some lady, like, can you hand me that, Sonny? You know, it's, it's pretty <laughs> uh, but But anyway, no, I, again, you t- took away my ability to drive a car. Now you're taking away my ability to, to grocery shop. No, no, you're still shopping. You're in the store. I've left you the store. Okay, thanks. Right. I would have preferred that you stayed at home <laughs> and had it delivered, but apparently you didn't plan ahead, uh, and you need to be in that store. Well, let me make that store that's as easy as possible I like to shop, though. It's not planning it. I like to go. Well, you can go ahead and shop. Right, you thanks. just don't have to wait in line to check out. Mm-hmm. So now we're getting rid of the cashiers, and that's, you know, that's kind of sad, but... That's where they're moving mm-hmm. because what you don't get is even, you know, you know, those rewards cards. Yes. They're tracking everything you buy. That's a goldmine of data for um, the store. But mm-hmm. that card is not a smart card. The analytics that they do doesn't help you get products, right? Right. So imagine you walking by something that you always buy, a little icon or a little um, uh, flag comes up on your phone that says, hey, Mike, you know, you forgot to get your, you know, whatever it is, your jar of jelly or whatever you're buying on a regular basis. Yeah. That's a little and it creepy. reminds you. Yep. Imagine not having a shopping list because Amazon tells you what you're going to need based on your consumption history. And that means that maybe if they had some kind of connection into my home to see how the shelves look or whatever, maybe they had that, that information too. But see, I sh- you know, Now you're crazy talking. I am crazy Come talking. on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking also, yeah, no, I'm not. That could happen <laughs> as well. Um I'm thinking about the, the person that likes to go to one store. Like right now, your, your test model, those folks are going to one store, mm-hmm. and, they're, and they're developing some sort of purchasing history, which can be tracked. Are, are we creatures of habit to that degree? Oh, that largely. Sense? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All of that marketing data and analytics data has been around in some form or another. We are, we are sold to, and you know that. We, mm-hmm. are, you know, we know that certain people and certain groups and certain areas, they have preferences, right? And some preferences go across all humans, right? We, we like certain things. Mm-hmm. And so that's used to market to us. Now, the idea is that everything will be personalized. I'll spend less time shopping because outside of, of you, you know, most people don't want to be shopping, right? They're like, I'm going to shop on the way home. It's an errand. It's not an experience. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a lot of fun. I don't know. But again, well, so no more cashiers. No. We still need stock boys, though. Um, well, probably or, not because or stock girls or stock somebody's. Yeah, stock folks um, <laughs> to some degree. However, you know, getting products on shelves can happen at night um, by robots. No, uh, not if you have a popular item. You know, those those hungry jack potatoes tend to move certain and, times of the year. And you'll know exactly based on the <laughs> analytics, and you put more out and dedicate more shelf space. I so, have no idea why I pull hungry jack potatoes. So, <laughs> so That's when we come back from the yes. break, what I'd like to talk about is Mike, and you kind of, I think you're getting to it. Mm-hmm. What about privacy concerns, and what are the risks here when now in the real world everything I do is tracked as well? Everything is tracked already. We wonder about that. You know, we've told a few stories about Facebook and Twitter. So speaking of that, we are so glad that you tuned in here to Tech Talk 2020. We'll see you after the break here on WINT Radio, 1330 AM and 101.5 FM. We'll talk to you after the break. At Pat O'Brien Chevrolet, the last sale of the year is the biggest sale of the year. Now is the time to buy that new Chevy you've been dreaming about. Huge rebates and discounts will save you time and money, while upfront pricing makes buying fast and easy. We got them. Come get them at Pat O'Brien Chevrolet. Average sports fan ponders his evening. Wow, tonight is a big night for sports on TV, but small choices in my fridge. What about Players Club at Lost Nation Sports Park? The Players Club has big energy, but small, cozy atmosphere. Big TVs, small drive. Big happy hour, small prices. Big parking lot, small hassle. Awesome burgers, big salad, lots of appetizers. Okay, that's it. I'm going tonight. The Players Club at Lost Nation Sports Park. Yeah, it's a big deal. Small wonder. Pat O'Brien Chevrolet is the only place you need to go if you're thinking about buying a new pickup. We have over 300 new Chevy Silverados to choose from with the biggest rebates and discounts of the year. Save time and money. We got them. Come get them at Pat O'Brien Chevrolet. 
A recent article on the Sleep Geek blog states, Brandon store loyalty, especially with younger shoppers, is very low. Mattresses are viewed as a commodity to be purchased during national holidays when they are at quote-unquote huge markdowns, and internet campaigns create buzz instead of focusing on the actual product quality. This is Robin Trusinski, and while these may be the overarching trends, they are not without exception. The original mattress factory exists to build a better bed. Our brand has a loyal customer base, over half of which are repeat customers. We view mattresses not as commodities, but as products essential to your overall health and well-being. We know that the huge markdown sales don't really exist and focus instead on providing real value by offering quality products at factory direct prices to every customer every day. We are also committed to offering the best service with an expert sales staff that can provide you with more knowledge than any other mattress store. So stop by today and experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Welcome back to Tech Talk 2020 with Sanjay Parker. I am Sanjay Parker, and I'm here with my co-host, Mike Carswell. Hey. We're talking about Amazon Go, the store where you won't even have to check out. You come in, you grab your items, and you go. Pretty cool stuff. Mike's loving it. I can't <laughs> wait. Well, you, do you get checked out even though you don't have a checkout? I mean, right, right. you get checked out when you're there? Yeah, well. It happens I, to me all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's checking me out today, baby? Uh, so oh my! <laughs> we're glad you're back here. And again, we talked about a little bit, uh, you know, some things that creep me out just a little bit. I, I wonder how much of our listening audience out there, how how many transactions they do online, uh, one a day, uh, one a month. Uh, you know, there, there's some people I, I probably do online transactions two or three times a year. Just not a big fan of my information being out there. So so this kind of all lends itself into my trepidations. Yeah, yeah. No, it is cool. And and before we left for the break, we started talking a little bit about privacy. And we know that online today, most of us, you know, give up privacy to get personalization. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know that Amazon knows everything I buy because I get recommendations. It brings up specials, you know, when they happen. And then I appreciate that. So I like that. We know that when you, you know, give your Heinen's card to Heinen's, they know everything that you buy and they Mm -hmm. do demographic data and they do analysis to tune the products to, you know, what people are buying. And so that's helpful for them uh, based on your address and location and all of that stuff. However, now that we're talking about um, implementing sensors and RFID tracking and integrated personalization to an actual store checkout, Mm -hmm. you know, now, you know, if somebody uses my Amazon account, my wife and I share my Amazon account. Amazon doesn't quite know if I ordered, you know, the um, <laughs> girl's tank top shirt or my wife did. They yeah, probably they assume that. there's somebody else at the house, you know, right? Sure. But now if I walk into a physical store and I'm picking a product, they know exactly who's picking up that product, right? And so that data is building around you. What can that data be used for? Not only purchase history, um, the pattern that you walk into the store around on, you know, and, and what you look at because sensors are tracking that, mm-hmm. how long you hold the item, what parts of the item you view. Are you reading ingredients? Are you reading, you know, calories? Or are you just looking at the price, right? And then you're putting that into your cart. That's great data to have, but that's privacy. Yeah, great data for the folks that are selling information to you to have. But, you know, again, I think it's almost at the, reaching a point where we just have to give up and understand that everything I shop for, everything I purchase, even probably everything that I watch on television um, and the games I play or whatever I do, there's somebody that's aware of what's going on and they're looking to market to me and because I'm valuable. They want my cash. Yeah. and you I know, should feel loved. The pursuit of cash for innovation has historically been a great advantage to the U.S., right? In mm-hmm. pursuit of profit, uh, our country has innovated like no other country ever, right? And that's my opinion. I mean, mm-hmm. it's amazing from, sure. you know, the industrial manufacturing age to the um, digital revolution and the internet era and social services uh, online. We have dominated that because of the incentive to profit from it. So yep. I'm cool with that. Um, we do have to have protection in place for consumers, I think. So we'll have to see, you know, where this comes out um, and what kind of things are, are given up in reality, right? And we talked about, you know, when you use free services, for example, Google knows everything you do online. Mm-hmm. If you have a problem, even if you use Gmail, 
you're not really a customer of Google, right? You're the right. product. Right. So yep. they're selling you to people who are marketing to you, and that's how they monetize their business model. I think people need to understand that as far as Facebook and as far as Google or any search engine or any uh, searching or significant amount of time you spend online, if you have an issue, good luck with that, getting it resolved, because basically, like Sanjay's saying, you are the product. You're being sold your your data your information, your trends, what you like to do and enjoy is being sold to uh, marketing companies. Right, right. So. And so free is not really free. You're giving up information about yourself that has some monetary value that is being resold. So that transaction doesn't involve you opening your wallet or your credit card. It involves you giving up something that's uh, valuable. So kind of interesting there. But um, have you heard of a service called Instacart? Instacart, no. Instacart. So no, they partnered with Whole Foods okay. um, and others um, a while ago, over a year ago, mm -hmm. and that's like an eternity in the space. And what they do is you go ahead and you order stuff uh, and put it in your Instacart basket. You click a button, and an Instacart driver will go to the store. There's a special line where somebody's bagged up all your groceries. Okay. They pick them up, and they deliver them to your house. Uber? Yeah, they partnered with Uber too, right? <laughs> You've got to have some person at some point in the process here. Right, that's that gig economy, right? People are doing what they want in right. their spare time. They're driving around, they're picking up things, they're delivering them. It's it's great for people who Well, let me paint a picture for you. If you're a senior and you don't want to go outside and it's it's snowing like it's going to be doing this week, mm -hmm. you know, I can see the advantages there. But I do think that sometimes we forget about this geographically we live in the Midwest, and folks that live in some of the bigger cities, let's say you're in Manhattan or you're in Philadelphia or you're in L.A., there are a lot of people that don't go grocery shopping, or they do go grocery shopping. Uh, I'm sorry, they don't go grocery shopping, and they have groceries delivered to their home. You know, I wouldn't trust anybody to – I guess I should trust them to pick up my milk. But Could I? I? <laughs> I would love to do that. But I, but I, but I, <laughs> do, I do want to select a piece of beef I'm buying or the chicken and look at it before someone sends me that stuff. I, I, I guess we're just yeah. accustomed to doing things some ways. But in larger cities where there's more people, um, you know, you just get more accustomed to, I want to almost call it communal or service, more service-oriented living. Yeah, convenience based, right. right? So I don't. I'd rather spend time with my kids than standing in line or going to a grocery store. If I say I want two pounds of crab legs, well, I'm going to assume that you've commoditized that product enough so that the difference between, you know, those crab legs are minimal. Or if you give me a bag of apples, I expect them not to be bruised. Or you right, know, there's a right. remediation mm -hmm. process where I can, you know, file a claim. But you, know, you could take it home and realize you missed that too. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you are shopping, but. I think, you know, if we take this further, so, mm -hmm. you know, I can order from home and get it to my home. I can go into the store and not wait in lines to check out. It's mm -hmm. about time and convenience. And, you know, we use this theme on the show a lot. Sure. Frictionless, right? I don't yep. want any barriers to that transaction because the more transactions that happen uh, from a company perspective, the better that company is, right? So how do I speed up those transactions, right? How do I prompt people for things? How do I get them ready for people um, so that they can take them and, and get them home quickly so that they can consume those products and then, you know, come around and buy more? <laughs> okay. It's not inconceivable, Mike, that, you know, we have amazing you – know, right now we've got product, we've got purchase, we've got a distribution system, mm -hmm. right? And then yep. you've got consumption. That's the whole cycle of, yep. of groceries, let's say, and, and other products too. So imagine if – you know, so we've got automation with you know the product stocking. We've got automation with and the creation and yeah, manufacturing. The checkout, that, sure. right? All of that's there. The distribution. We've got options today: drones, right? <laughs> we've got Uber drivers, right? We have got all of that, and then the consumption. We know we're tracking. There can be a day that that distribution is so good, and the tracking is so good from your home, automatically, that you will never run out of a product that you use because by the time you're about to run out. It's already on its way over to your place, right? And that, imagine that. I've seen sci-fi images in the past where it's like you open up your fridge and you take out some jelly and then a, you know, a hand comes and gives you another jar of jelly or it's like a, a vending machine in your house. A perpetually stocked refrigerator with items that you want and need and use. That's pretty cool. Did, did, did you have something to drink earlier before you came here today? Actually, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I had... <laughs> 
I, I want. It's a great coffee machine here, W I N T. And I got an es- espresso, but it was so little. You know, yeah. I'm like, well, I got to get something else. So I put a cafe mocha on top. Ah. So this thing was filled to the brim. And okay. I'm going to go, I'm going to do some jumping jacks in about six minutes. <laughs> but that's why you're talking about a hand coming to your refrigerator delivering you jelly. Come on now. Um, automation <laughs> <laughs> Automation is going to reach a point of silliness, I believe. But but you're right. I think if we took a, uh, a look back 100 years ago and what was the number one mode of transportation? Oh, I can't wait. What was the number one mode of, of, uh, of, of eating and how things were eaten? Did that mode of transportation Winnie? <laughs> yeah, it did. Okay. <laughs> and, then, and then also, uh, what was the number one uh, communication process? Well, back then, before there was a telephone... Before oh, there was careful. Before there was telegram. <laughs> careful, <laughs> careful. Uh, there was tell us something else. But <laughs> you can <laughs> say, say it. it. You can. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it. it. No, but but you know, so things have changed, and so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt here that in a hundred years, which neither one of us will be able to enjoy it, things are going to be significantly different on how progression of uh, automation takes over and takes its place in our life. So I give you that. Uh, I do think that. Um, um, since we're so accustomed to shopping, so accustomed to driving, so accustomed to whatever the function or activity it is, we've kind of made it a part of our life and our culture. And we almost, well, again, I enjoy it. But I guess if when I came to the WINT studios tonight, if I could have just sat in my car and done my thing and let the car bring me here. And the dinner that I, I prepared yesterday, I had pork chops and broccoli and mm. pierogies. I was killing it. Nice. Um, if somebody else prepared that for me and it was just as good and just as ex- inexpensive as I did it, I guess that would be attractive. Yeah, so. because we're about speed and we're about, you know, the American dream is to be able to provide for your family, have security, stability, and have time to enjoy the company of friends and family, of course, mm-hmm. right? And to, you know, have time for the pursuits of, of life, liberty, and happiness, right? Mm-hmm. If we don't have time, that's that's horrible, right? So we're trying to find ways to afford ourselves extra time. And so maybe you know, there's a percentage of people who still want to go into stores. You know, Black Friday, um, my wife loves going at midnight and doing crazy stuff. And, you know, just finding that deal from midnight until four in the morning or whatever and comes home with bags and stuff. Well, this year they kind of took that away from her, right? And it's not automation. It's stores deciding we're going to start Black Friday at noon, <laughs> and we're going to keep it going for the whole weekend. Yeah. So there's no rush. And so now that piece of, of coolness was taken away from her and had nothing to do with technology, had to do with profit. And I think and that, safety yeah. in some cases. Sure, yeah. sure. And, and, and actually, the Black Friday uh, craze has minimized a little bit in the last couple of years because stores are open on Thanksgiving. But I don't know. It just This year, there was a lot less advertising, so it appears. For Black Friday, they talked about mm-hmm. it earlier. There's some companies I think they're still riding a horse, but honestly, I just sensed and noticed that the Black Friday based based it on Amazon. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is online ordering, but it, it seemed to be much minimized this year. Right, and um, we're almost at the end of our show, but sure. um, Black Friday. Do you know how that term what, what that means? Um, I'm guessing that. It's, a, it's the way that the stores stay in the black for the year because they sell so much. Yeah, that's yeah, traditionally when retailers actually get into the profit mm-hmm. uh, zone, right into uh, the black because so they've been losing all year. Right, I guess. Yeah, they, wow. the volume of sales from that day onwards is significant compared to the whole year because it's the holiday shopping season. Sure, absolutely. Well, guys, we're so grateful that you tuned in for the last half an hour of your life to hang out here with us on Tech Talk 2020. We are uh, going to jam our way out the door here. I think our board op wants to dance with us here on WINT, <laughs> 1330 AM and WINT 101.5 FM. So glad you're here. Uh, tune in next week. We'll be talking about more fun technology stuff and getting smarter together. This is Mike and Sanjay signing out. Thank you, Josiah. You the man. Thank you. Bye.